Hey everybody, this is Cadroll Hunter, and we're going to be hunting some nickels today, but this is a very special batch of nickels. And I think if you take a close look here, you'll see why. There's a lot of Laureate portraits, a lot of 1964s. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is James and you're watching my channel, Cadroll Hunter, and recently a subscriber reached out to me and told me that he had a whole bunch of pennies if I was interested. He knew that I was searching pennies and offered them up. When I went out to see him, he had a whole bunch of nickels and I bought all of this off him for face value. That's great. There could be nothing in here, but there might be something really cool. But in these nickels, I'm really excited because you can see these are some older wrappers that we don't see very often these days. And these ones we looked at earlier, a lot of Laureate portrait, mostly 1963 and 1964, but I don't know what's in here at all. These were already wrapped. These ones were just loose in a tub. I put them into rolls. I didn't take a close look. This means that we've got an opportunity potentially to find an extra waterline, a 1964 extra waterline. I've never had so many 64s to search. I'm assuming they're 64s. That's what he thought they were. And we can clearly see here that we've got some Laureate portraits. They're definite candidates. And if I flip this over, we can see some dates. There's 63s and 64s on there. So there might not be much interesting to find in the 63s, but if we've got whole rolls of 64, we might have some goodies in here. So let's get into the hunt and see what we can find. I'm gonna start with these ones first. And we'll work our way to those ones. But these ones, I have no idea. I don't know if there's going to be anything older or if they're all 63s and 64s. We'll find out. So here's that first roll. I've laid it out. That 1964 on the end tells us we might have 64s. And so far, you can see they're not uncirculated by any stretch. So somebody has collected 64s. And there's a 63, so it's not solid 64s. What I'm going to do is go through, through these one roll at a time and see what's here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out anything that is in excellent condition. The one on the other end I saw looked pretty good. Well, it's not uncirculated for sure. If we have any that appear to be uncirculated, like a mint state condition, I'll certainly pull them aside. Anything that is circulated like this is just going in the nickel jar, and that's okay. But uh, I'm really excited. What I'm gonna be doing is scoping all of these 64s to see if there is the extra water line. And that would be seen on the KG. We'd see a die crack from that log to the rim. I've pulled up the Coins in Canada website so we can have a really good look at the things that we're gonna be looking for in these rolls, particularly in the 1964s. On the left, of course, we can see this is what the water lines look like on the nickel. And just down here is what that extra water line looks like. So you can see that die crack that makes it look like there's an extra water line by the designer's initials. So we're gonna be looking for that for sure. And then there's this other inter interesting one. I've never really looked for it, the Whistling Queen. It's a little bit of a die break or something by the queen's lips, making it look like she's whistling. We'll have a look for that and see if we can find one. And of course, why we're looking for that extra water line, if I go up to the pricing information up here, even in a VG8, that would be a really terrible condition coin, it's over $20. If we can find it in an AU, it's about $35. And something I wasn't even aware of is that there is the odd uh, 1964 in coin orientation. Canadian coins are in metal orientation. That simply means that the, uh, the design is the same. You have to flip it sideways as opposed to coin orientation, which you would flip like this, like American coins. So we'll look to see if we have any of those. So we've got a lot of things to look for in the 64s. The only variety of note in coins in Canada for the 63 is a double 63. And you can see it on the right hand side. That's from coins in Canada. Um, and it's going to be really hard to see. You can see this circulated coin on the left. Um, it would be hard to tell. So we'll we'll look anyhow to see. We, I think we're going to have a bunch of 63s. We should be able to see it. I, I think it might command a slight premium. It's something interesting. Um, it'll make the hunt fun, particularly if we're looking through rolls and rolls of all the same coin. I'm hoping we find something. All right, a quick little recap of roll number one. We didn't find anything. Uh, most of these were 1964s. There was a small number of 1963s. 
I did set aside a few of the nicer 63s and 64s. At the very end, I'm going to go through all the ones I've set aside and just pick out the best of the best. Um, we're probably going to find a few nice ones in here, but no extra water lines, no whistling queens, no double 63s. So on to the next roll. So that second roll was much like the first one, mostly 1964s, some 63s, but there was also this random 1986. And that tells me a couple of things. First, it tells me that these rolls haven't been wrapped up since the 60s. That's one thing. And because they've been uh, wrapped up sometime after that, and they're all 63s and all 64s so far, it suggests to me that we're not likely to find an extra water line. I don't know how likely it is that somebody was just randomly grabbing 63s and 64s and not checking them. Or, you know, by the 80s, the uh, variety we're looking for, the extra water line, was well known and people would have been looking for them. So it's very likely that whoever rolled these up was actively looking for those extra water lines. So we'll have to see if that's true or not. The only way to know for sure, of course, is to look at every single one of them. And if this really is just a random assortment of 1963s and 1964s, we have to go through a lot of them before we're likely to ever find an extra water line. And because I'm a trooper, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Roll number three, and I've got a 1963 under the scope, and I think I've found one of the double threes. And you can see what looks like sort of a darker shadow around here, but particularly what I want you to pay attention to is this die chip in the six. The example of the double three from Coins in Canada you can see where that doubling is on the three there, and it has that same die chip in the six. Suggests to me that we might have the same die. And so I'm gonna set this aside. If we found one, we might find more. This one's not in great shape, but uh, if we find one that's a little nicer, that would be really cool. So there it is, average circulated condition. It's got some scratches, you can see that. Maybe we'll find another one that's in nicer shape. Same roll, we'll file this under miscellaneous. It's another 1963, but when I flip it over, it has clearly been painted red. It's starting to come off, but we'll just set that one aside. That's interesting, at least for now, anyhow. Roll number four, we found a random 1968. That's just our second coin that isn't a 63 or 64. Well, it was until this. We found a random King George VI, a 1940. So who knows what else might be in here? We're, we're, uh... We're gonna find out. End of roll number six and a 1962 snuck in. So far, the only 12-sided edge we've found means we can check it for the double 1962, the double date. And there it is. We would see some doubling at the base of this two and often at the one. We don't see it here, just a scratched up 1962. We'll throw it to the side. 10 rolls down and so far, no extra water line. We've got that one that might be the uh, double three. I'm rolling them back up. Here's what we've got. I've got a bunch of rolls of 64 and a couple of 63. And it's been the same story pretty much. Uh, a handful sort of sprinkled into each row. Um, so we'll carry on. I'll, I'll continue on with these same wrappers. These three here look to be maybe homemade wrappers. And I don't know if that means there's something different in there. And I guess there's another one over here too. So we'll just keep on keeping on here. Roll 11. And you can see that most of these coins have been fairly circulated and scratched up, but this one here is just a gorgeous 1964. Not the extra water line, you can clearly see that, but this is probably the nicest of the coins I've seen so far, and I'll just grab it by the edge. We'll take a peek. And that almost seems like a, like a proof-like coin. Very frosted cameo finish on that one. I'm gonna set that one aside. It's very different than the rest. Almost a mirror-like finish. That is just a beauty. Roll number 12, and we're gonna have probably our best 1963 here. Really, really nice. Again, not quite the same uh, mirror finish and sort of cameo finish as the 64. So I think it's somewhat different, but this is still a beautiful coin. I'm definitely setting this one aside. Roll number 15, so far a couple of 1963s and the rest are 1964s. And I've got one here and have a look. Do we have an extra water line? And check this out, look at this. We have a 1964 extra water line in the roll. Our persistence has paid off. You can see what appears to be an extra water line right below the designer's initials. This is the water line that's supposed to be there. This one is a die crack from the log 
over towards the rim, we found a 1964 extra water line in these rolls. Could there be any more? We'll find out. This is awesome. This is a bucket lister of mine. I have been looking for one of these for a very long time, and I honestly didn't think I would find it. I was hoping to find it, of course, in circulation. Um, this isn't exactly in circulation. Somebody's rolled up these 64s, and I thought perhaps because we'd gone through 14 rolls of these so far that they'd all been searched, and this is just the product of that. And uh, maybe that's not the case because we have a 1964 extra water line right here in the roll. Really cool. So we're at the halfway point, 17 rolls down, 17 rolls to go. And our search has been fruitful. We got that 164 that is absolutely the extra water line. We can see it really clearly right there. We're done these rolls here. So we've I've marked them all up. There were three full rolls of 63s and actually there's gonna be a fourth one right here. And a whole bunch of 64s that aren't the extra water line. These rolls are somewhat different. At least one of these rolls might just be modern nickels that were mixed in with some pennies I kind of rolled up. But some of these were in with the same lot. I don't know if they just ran out of wrappers or if they're from a different person or what the deal might be. I'm not sure if these are all 63s and 64s. We'll find out. Um, and I've set aside the nicest ones, including that gorgeous 1964 you can see right there. That one I'm gonna flip up for sure. I think that one's a special one, absolutely. You can just see how different it looks. Um, but we'll keep on going, see what we get. Well, laying that roll down tells me that it's gonna be much the same as before, but what I'm noticing is that some of these appear to be in very, very nice condition. These might be maybe the better ones. The ones we had so far have been quite circulated, but this one looks pretty promising in terms of quality. That one particularly looks really nice. So we'll see if we can find any oddities. An extra water line would be awesome in these 64s. I just thought I'd show this example from the roll. They're not all this nice, but just look at how clean the fields are on this particular 1964, even under the scope and magnification. That's a beauty. Roll number 25 is looking a little bit different. There's a couple of Americans here. There's uh, some 12-sided edges of 59. A 62 we can check, and a George V, a 1946, and then a, a newer one, a couple newer ones. But I can see further back, it looks to be more of these 63s and 64s. So I think some of these might have just got mixed up together, but still got more to look through and a couple of other oldies, so that's cool too. I'm in roll number 27 and just got another gorgeous nickel, another 1963, beautiful. If I flip it over. You can see it is just gorgeous, wow. We're already into roll number 30 and this one is actually a mix of, it looks like modern stuff. This was some loose stuff that came with all these rolls that I just threw into a roll. And so of course there's a 96. I scoped it to see if we had the attached six, we don't. Right behind it is the 1990. And so I put it under the scope to see if we had the bare belly and we do. That's awesome, total unexpected find. I thought these were all 63s and 64s, but we got the 1990 bare belly. You can see that uh, die polishing has sort of resulted in a lack of fur here and over at the front as well. That is an awesome one, a 1990. It's got some damage on it, but that is a really cool coin to find. The 1990 bare belly, one of my favorites. All right, this is actually really crazy because I just grabbed a 98 and I've heard tell of a 1998 bear belly and I scope all of my 98s and they're usually very detailed. And here I have a 1998. You can see that there. It's in relatively good condition, a few little nicks, but it definitely has the bear belly. And I don't know if that's from over polished dyes as well, or if it's a weak strike or what, but we found a 1990 and a 1998 bear belly. I've never found one of these before but I've seen some images before. They're not nearly as common, as far as I understand, as the 1990, but that is exceptionally cool. Well, the good times keep rolling in this roll. Here's a 1967 commemorative with the bunny, and it's got a couple scratches, but otherwise in pretty nice shape. So this roll is very different from the others, but we found some really interesting things in here so far. Still going, there's a lower mintage 1991. We'd call that a semi-key date here in Canada. And just at the back of this roll, another 1990. But this time when we scope it, we can see it is just the regular strike, regular version, not the bare belly. 
Here's roll 31 and we can already see some differences here. We've got some 12 sided edges, but check this out. We've got some World War II Tomback. There is a 1943. This is essentially a war nickel. It's a uh, an alloy that was used when nickel was required during the war effort. So there's one. There's another one. That's also a 1943. And then there's something else in here that is not Canadian at all. There is one penny from the United Kingdom. Same roll, and we've got an Elizabeth 12-sided edge. This one's a 1961. And I can check it for those die chips that we've been finding on these 1961s. So we found a bunch of 61s in a previous hunt that had die chips in the 6 and under the 1. You can see this one clearly has something under the 1, as well as it looks like it might even be almost like a little bit of a re-engraved date there. Can't tell for sure. But definitely a die chip at the base of the 1. So very interesting. And it's obviously very common on the 61s. Roll 32 has contained a mix of newer and older coins, but we found a 61, a couple 62s, a beautiful 58, a couple 59s. There's a stack of just sort of more contemporary. There's a 2008 there. But I bring you in because we got an older one. We got a King George VI. This time it's a 1950. And then there's a 2005 right behind it. So just a mix of stuff here. Very interesting. Now this roll has another 1998 we can actually look at and compare. This is what we would typically see, lots of detail in the fur and uh, even around these, these paws there, there's detail. We can compare it to that one that we got earlier, which clearly has less detail all around here and here, very similar to that 1990 bare belly. And it it seems like it is subject to the same issue the 1990 was, was dye abrasion or uh, dye polishing or something like that, where most of the detail is still on the coin. But in these particular spots, uh, the, it's missing that detail. So probably a late dye stage versus what this might be an early dye stage or a normal dye state, perhaps. Roll 33 is our second last roll, and it appears to be, again, a roll full of 63s and 64s. And our last roll also has a Laureate Portrait Ender, so probably is, again, the 63s and 64s. So we got another chance for another extra waterline if we can muster one up here. This is roll 34. We're just getting towards the end of it, but I wanted to bring you in just to show you this here. Just an absolutely perfect 1963. What a gorgeous coin. Uh, so I've got a, a growing stack here of the nicest 63s and the nicest 64s. And these ones below are ones that I thought were like particularly the best. So I'm going to go through these and find which of these, of course, are the best. Roll up the rest and then separate out, obviously, the any ones that I would consider like BU or like in this type of quality. I like to keep those set aside. So 34 rolls hunted and here are our discards all rolled up. We ended up with uh, one, two, three, four, seven full rolls of 1963s. We've almost actually probably eight full rolls because I've got some others set aside. We got at least 20 rolls, 21 I think, of 1964s. So these are all the circulated ones rolled up. We found all sorts of things even though we were really looking for one thing in particular. So I'll just go through what we did get. Got a few Americans, we got another four, and we got one penny from the UK. And in the miscellaneous category, this red painted, it's a 1963. Uh, we found a few modern ones, including a low mintage 91, a 1990 bare belly, which is awesome. And then a 1998 that could be called a bare belly, but seems to be also an overpolished die. We found some things that weren't just 1963s and 64s. There's a 58, a couple 59s, some 61s. That top one has the die chip on the one. It's pretty significant. A stack of 62s. We got a 1967 bunny nickel. And we got some King George VI, including a 1940. And two of those 1943 victory nickels made of tomback. A 46, a 50. And in the varieties that we were looking for, we scoped all of the 63s for a double date. And, you know, I didn't really see anything that would look like a double date. 
These two are very similar to that Coins in Canada entry. And what they do have, and you can almost see it with the naked eye, is the die chip in the six. So we found two of those. And that's similar to uh, something we saw in Coins in Canada. I set aside all of the nicest 63s and 64s. So this, these are 63s here. These ones are gorgeous. There's 64s there, and these ones are all gorgeous, including this top one, which I think if ever there was a proof like with Cameo 64, that is it right there. And uh, I'll look through all of them and tube up, separate out the best ones. But we were really looking for one thing with all of these 1964s. We were hoping to find a 1964 extra water line, and we found it. And I've got it here under the scope. We saw it earlier, but we'll take one more look. There is our 1964 extra water line. You can see that die crack there extending from the log by the initials right towards the rim. We only found one, but honestly, I didn't think we were going to find any at all because it just seemed like so many rolls of 1964s. The only way they probably ended up like this was if somebody had already gone through them. And they may very well have, and maybe we found the one they, they missed. But we'll take it. We found it in the hunt, a 1964 extra water line. It's circulated. It's got scratches. You can see the obverse there has some scratching, but it doesn't matter. We found a bucket lister 1964 extra water line for the collection, and that is simply amazing. I really hope you enjoyed this bit of a different hunt looking through rolls of mostly 1964s. I, we found some stuff, so that's cool. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Cad Roll Hunter, please go ahead and do that. You'll be uh, notified when I have new videos coming out. I have new videos coming out all the time. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time.